Hey guys, have you ever built one of these? Today we're going to show you how to build an octagon roof. Now a lot of people will look at these and think they're very difficult to frame. But actually any regular polygon is fairly simple. So what is a polygon? It simply means an enclosed figure. And a regular polygon is an enclosed figure with equal sides. Now the easy way to build these is with Roof Framers Bible. I wrote this book some years ago and it's loaded with information on how to frame practically any kind of roof. And I put a link in the description below so you'll know where to get one. Now for roof framing the two most common polygons are hexagon and octagon. Now Roof Framers Bible includes charts for five different regular polygons. Pentagon which is a five side, hexagon which is six sides, an octagon like we're going to do today with eight sides, a decagon ten sides, a dodecagon 12 sides. Today we're going to use it to show you how to build an octagon. And we want to start by going to the drawing on page 204 of Roof Framers Bible. Okay, here we have the drawing on page 204 and also combined with it the octagon chart from page 209. Just like a circle, every polygon has 360 degrees total all the way around it. So to get the angle of any particular side, we simply take the 360 degrees and we divide it by the number of sides. Now this is an octagon so it has eight sides. So 360 divided by eight gives you 45 degrees on each of these corners. Now half of that is going to be the working angle, 22 and a half degrees. And you'll see that down at the bottom of the chart over here. For each of these polygons it will give you the working angle. Now the two most important elements when working with an octagon is the common rafter run, that's from the outside to the center here, and the length of side. And if you look at the top of our chart, it says the common rafter run times 0.828 equals the length of the side. And inversely, if we already have the length of side, we can divide by 0.828 and that will give us our common rafter run. So quick and easy to switch from one to the other. Now the great thing about this chart here, and all of the polygon charts in Roof Framers Bible, is that it uses factors. And that's basically a one number method. So whatever value you have, you can multiply by a single number or factor and get the value that you need, quick and easy. And you don't have to do a big long string of mathematical calculations with a bunch of trigonometry. You simply take what you have, multiply it by the one number factor, and it will give you the value that you need. So here in the chart we've got all the information we need to frame any octagon from a 312 all the way up to a 3012. Okay, let's take a look at some of these factors. Oftentimes you will need to know the run of the hip rafter. So that's from the outside corner here back to the center. That's the horizontal run of the hip rafter. And we can quickly get that by going to the bottom of our chart here and it says common rafter run times 1.082 will give us the run of the hip rafter and we see that right here. Now we also have the pitch of the hip rafter. Now carpenters know that on a regular rectangular type hip roof the pitch of the hip will always be the pitch over 17. So if you were doing an 812 pitch the hip pitch would be an 817. Now on an octagon roof this is all standardized across all octagons the pitch of the hip rafter would instead be the roof pitch over 12 and 7 eighths. So if you had an 812 roof, the hip pitch would be 8, 12, and 7 eighths. Now in the model that we're going to build today, we're doing a 1412, and that's highlighted here on our chart. So our hip pitch would be a 14 over 12 and 7 eighths for the hip pitch. Now this drawing for the book is for a different size and pitch than the model we're building today. So to illustrate what we're doing for the model, it's a 1412 pitch. So let's take a look at how we get our rafter lengths for the model today. So to get our common rafter length, we simply go here to this 1412 line and we multiply our common rafter run, which in our model is 18 inches, times 1.537 and that will give us our common rafter length. In the same fashion, to get our hip rafter length, we use this hip length factor right here. We take our common run of 18 inches times 1.591 and that gives us our hip rafter length for the model today. Now here lastly in this right hand column it gives us the sheathing cuts. It's 12 and 7 eighths and that's from the long to short point on a 4 bay sheet of plywood. 
So you can see that this one chart quickly gets you all the information you need, your, your rafter length, your hip length, your hip run, your sheathing cuts, everything you need very quickly for any octagon from any pitch of 312 to 3012. Super quick and easy. All right, here on our model, we've got an octagon that is 36 inches wide. So from here to here, 36 inches. And of course, it'll be the same top to bottom as well. So to start framing this, we need to get the length of our side. And we know from the top of the page on Reframer's Bible that we use the common rafter run to get that. So half of our overall width, we had 36 inches, so half is 18 inches. That would be our common rafter run. And we simply take that 18 inches and we multiply it by the factor that's at the top of our octagon page, 0.828. And that will give us 14 and 7 eighths of an inch as the length of our side. So every side is 14 and 7 eighths inches long. All the way around, exactly the same. So it's really pretty easy. So all we've got to do is cut eight pieces, 14 and 7 eighths inches long, with a 22 and a half degree angle on each end. Now, as we talked about, an octagon has 360 degrees for the hole. We divide that by the number of sides. This is an eight-sided octagon. That will give us 45 degrees. So this angle here is 45 degrees all the way around. Half of that will be our working angle of 22 and a half degrees. So cut eight pieces, that length and that miter, and we assemble them in a circle arrangement, and we've got our octagon. Super easy. Okay, the octagon is assembled, and we've got these joints at each point. And having them all the same makes it easy to assemble these and properly align them. But this is weak. You've got a joint here at each corner. So you always want to reinforce that with a top plate. So you want to lap a top plate on here and run it long so that it overlaps the piece on either side so that when you nail it, it locks these corners together to make a strong roof. Typical use of a top plate. So that completes our top plate. We're ready to set some rafters. All right, we need to lay out for our common rafters and we're gonna have uh, eight common rafters. There'll be one in the center of each side of the octagon. So since our length of side was 14 and 7 eighths of an inch, that means that the center of that common will be seven and seven sixteenths to the center. So we wanna go three quarter each way that's the layout mark for our common rafter. And we'll just repeat the same thing all the way around the roof. Well, now we're ready to set some rafters, but we've got a decision to make. You see, one of the most complicated elements of these octagon roofs is the center point. We've got so many things coming together in the center, it gets a little crowded up there. There's more than one way to do this, and we're gonna take a look at a couple of them. Okay, here's the first way of going about doing this. This is a plan view drawing of our octagon that's looking down straight from above. And we want to look at how these rafters will come together in the center right here. So if we look at it closer, we've got a common rafter on this side and a common rafter on this side. And we'll allow them to butt straight in the middle. Now the common rafters on the top here and the bottom will deduct three quarters of an inch from each of them so they can butt into the side. Now the four remaining common rafter, that's here, 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 and here, will have a double cheek cut on them so that they fit up into the corners of these other common rafters. Now all of the hip rafters, there'll be eight of those, they will have to have these sharp cheek cuts on each side, and each of these hip rafters shown in yellow will be, have to be put all the way around right up in between the common rafters. So that's one way of doing it. As you can see, it gets really crowded up here in the center of the octagon. And uh, there is an alternative way of doing that. We'll show you in just a second. Okay, here we have the same plan view drawing showing the second way of doing this. So as we zoom up here closer, you'll see that we have this blue octagon that's around here. And this is representing our ridge pin. 
And so each side of the octagon will be an inch and a half wide. So this common rafter can butt to this face. This common rafter here can butt to this face and so forth and so on all the way around. And that makes it a little easier than having quite so many of these competing rafters right up here in the center. Now a way to do this, which we're going to use today, is to have for a ridge a little mini octagon. And that way we've got an inch and a half flat spot all the way around for each common rafter to butt against it. As you can see here. Now if you remember before, we used the common rafter run to get the length of the side of our larger octagon. In this case, we know the length of side is going to be an inch and a half, the width of our common rafters. So if we use the factor in reverse, we take the inch and a half divided by 0.828, and that will give us the common rafter run of our little mini octagon here. So if we double that, it will give us 3 and 5 8 inch across the whole thing. So that tells us what we need in order to make a deductions from our common rafter. So quick and easy to set this up there and have each common rafter but these inch and a half wide facets here at the ridge. Okay, if we want to lay out our rafter, we need to know our adjusted run. So that would be the 18 inches, which is half of our overall octagon, minus the 1.81 inches, that's half of our little octagon ridge. That will give us an adjusted common rafter run of 16.19 inches. Now since we're using a 1412 pitch, we would go into the Roof Framers Bible and get the factor of 1.537 that would give us our overall common rafter length. So we simply take that adjusted common rafter run of 16.19 inches times 1.537 and that give us our overall rafter length of 24.88 inches. And that would be along the top of our rafter here from this point down to the hap right above the plate. And there's our common rafter. I'm not going to go into how to lay out these tails or how to position a square on the rafter. For that you want to go to our first video, A Beginner's Guide to Roof Framing. So we just go ahead and cut these and we position all the common rafters right around the roof. So that's all of our common rafters and now we're ready to set some hip rafters. Now the hip rafters are longer because they run on an angle. The common rafters are square from the plate but the hip runs on an angle which means it has to run longer. Now if you're doing a larger octagon and you need to calculate the run of the hip rafter that's very easily done. You simply go to the bottom of the octagon chart and it's got a factor. You take the common rafter run times 1.082 and that will give you the horizontal run of the hip rafter from here back to there, the same point as the common. And that works for any pitch regardless. As long as it's an octagon that factor will work to get your hip rafter run. Now because that hip is running longer than the common rafter, it changes the pitch just like you have on a regular hip roof where the hip rafter will be uh, whatever the roof pitch over 17 instead of 12. It's the same thing here on an octagon. So the hip pitch will be a little flatter than the common rafter pitch. It's going to be whatever the pitch is over 12 and 7 eighths. So that's true regardless of any pitch. If it's a 14 12 like we're doing here, that uh, hip pitch would be a 14 12 and 7 eighths, whereas the common rafter would be a 14 over 12. Now to get the length of this hip rafter, we go back to our chart and we take the common rafter run times the factor, the, the hip length factor of 1.591 and that will give us the overall length of our hip rafter. So we cut our rafter and we've got some really sharp angles here on the top. You see the way it sets up in the corner? You know, and that's really too sharp for you to cut with a skill saw, but if you'll cut this square on a plumb cut of the 14, 12, and 7 eighths, and then scribe a line right down the middle, set your saw on 22 and a half degrees and cut it this way, setting on that square end and you can cut that. 22 and a half this way yields this much sharper angle 
viewed from the side. And that gives you the angle that you need to jam right up there between them. Now on the bottom end of your little hip, you need a double cheek cut of 22 and a half degrees on each side here at the end of your overhang. That's so your fascia can run out here in a line. Now you also will need to put backing bevels on the top of the hip, or as we did here, drop the hip so the shoulders of the hip will flush out with the commons on each side. We cut the bird's mouth here an extra 3 eighths of an inch to allow it to drop down to plane these roofs out. So we'll just set all these hip rafters. So there you have it. Pretty cool little octagon roof. The only thing left is to put the roof sheathing on. Roof Framers Bible makes that really easy too. You just go to the same chart and over on the right side of the chart, it gives all the sheathing cuts. So for the 1412 pitch, we see our sheathing cut is 12 and 7 eighths. That's from long to short on a four bait sheet, but it gives the roof sheathing cuts for all the roof pitches from 312 to 3012. See, polygons are really pretty easy because they're standardized. It's the same angles all the way around. All the rafters are exactly the same length. Not bad, pretty easy to do. Roof Framers Bible is, is a great book loaded with all kinds of information on how to frame practically any kind of roof. It has all the rafter lengths and angles all pre-calculated for you in a compact pocket reference that you'll want to have in your nail bags or in your truck. But there isn't space for an expansive explanation of every roof framing situation. For that, I want to recommend this companion book, A Roof Cutter's Secrets by Will Holiday. It is fantastic. It gives detailed information on all kinds of framing situations. Will was a master carpenter. He built in the tracks doing production houses for many years, and then he went into custom homes where he encountered just about any kind of uh, framing situation that you can think of. And he has detailed all of those in this great book, including chapter 10, the expansive explanations of towers and polygons, such as we did today. You really want to get a copy of A Roof Cutter Secrets. I put a link in the description below to be sure you know where to get one. You don't want to miss out on this great book. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you want to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our coming videos. And to see all of our current videos, please check out our playlist right here. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you the next time.